Welcome to the Poor Man's Retro Game Room, and today I wanted to take a look at five games uh, that you could only play on the Sega Genesis back in the day. Um, and I kind of wanted to start this uh, discussion with you guys as well. Uh, you know, that's, that's what's great about a video like this, is reading your guys' posts uh, in the comments. So, um, you know, if you want to put uh, in the comments some of the games that, uh, that you could only play on the Sega Genesis back in the day, uh, maybe even some games that you feel are overlooked for the Sega Genesis. Yeah, man, get in the comments, put those in there, and uh, we'll have a good discussion. Um, and I think it, that would be a value to everybody watching the video. Um, so if you are watching this video, check out the, the uh, comments section. Because um, we do have a lot of very good uh, discussions and very positive discussions in our uh, comments section. Um, so... Uh, without further ado, let's take a look at five games that you could only play on the Sega Genesis back in the day. And the very first game that we're going to start off with uh, is a uh, really good platforming game. A good game for kids and adults. Uh, my grandkids love it. I love it. So uh, that's pretty amazing when a game fills that spot where pretty much everybody can play it and like it. Um, and that is The Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Uh, this is uh, a very, very good game that adults will enjoy as well. So let's take a look at uh, The Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse uh, was released in 1990 for the Sega Genesis. Um, it was developed uh, by Sega and um, it's a uh, very, very good platforming game. Uh, like I said, everybody will enjoy, uh, especially kids, and um, playing it with your kids and grandkids is really cool. Uh, it is a single player game. Um, what makes this game so great, I believe, is the smoothness of the animation. Um, th it was really amazing to see uh, Mickey Mouse. It was like you were watching a cartoon uh, back in the day. And to see that, um, and all the uh, levels that you go through, and the atmosphere of the levels, uh, they vary greatly, and uh, they're just excellent. It takes full advantage um, of the Sega Genesis hardware. Uh, the soundtrack, of course, is amazing. Uh, Disney had a really good run on the Sega Genesis back in the day, and uh, it all kind of started with Castle of Illusion. So. Um, I highly, highly recommend this. I do remember the first time I played this, my cousin Thomas brought it down into my uh, house. And uh, we stayed up, um, yeah, pretty much all night playing this. And even though it's a single player game, all we did was just, you know, alternate guys. So you'd, one player would play and then you'd pass the controller to the next. And uh, yeah, we, we had a really good time. And it blew my mind because I had passed this game up uh, thinking that oh, it's just a kitty game, you know, um, and uh, he he wasn't into kitty games. <laughs> so when he brought it down, it was it was um, a pretty big surprise. I'm glad he did. Uh, what an amazing game! Um, really good bosses, uh, you know, just the smoothness of the animation and the care and passion put in this game is amazing. Um, so anyway, uh, Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse could only be played on the Sega Genesis. And the second game that I wanted to shine the light on um, for the Sega Genesis that was only playable on the Sega Genesis back in the day is one of the first games that I feel on this list that are overlooked. Uh, and that game is Jewel Master. Um, this has some very cool mechanics in, in it, and it's a very unique game. And it's an early Sega Genesis uh, game. So... Um, you know, if you kind of want to know what the experience was like back in the day uh, when the Sega Genesis had, you know, maybe it's its first year or two of release, um, Jewel Master is a very good way to experience that. Um, really a good game and uh, just <laughs> very unique. So let's take a look at the Jewel Master. Jewel Master was released in 1991, uh, was developed by Sega for the Sega Genesis. Um, and it is a one-player, single-player game. Uh, it takes place in a uh, country called Mythgard, 
and uh, you must play the Jewel Master who has to uh, traverse very different levels uh, ranging from you know deserts to rugged mountains and through uh, ruins um, you know it's very very cool uh, that way uh, the it, it is a difficult game I will tell you that uh, it, at least in my opinion it is um, but uh, you know difficult games sometimes that's good uh, if they're a good game because uh, you know this is the kind of game that I go back to um, every now and then and just uh, play 30 40 minutes you know and try to get as far as I can um, it is really good and uh, basically your whole thing is that you want to collect all um, of the 12 rings and each ring has a different element to it um, and so when you get those rings uh, you would equip one and what you can do is you can pull all the rings off first of all and then decides which ones you're gonna combine because you have two slots for rings on um, each hand so you, you use two fingers on each hand for those rings and uh, they give you different powers uh, with the ones that you um, combine so uh, you know you might have a uh, ice ring and a fire ring um, and they may cancel each other out those two but if there's a, uh, a different kind of ring that you put on with them um, it can give you ice daggers it can give you flame walls um, fireballs uh, you can get uh, an electrical uh, shield to cover you. Um, you can get uh, rings and combine them so that you can jump higher and that'll get you through different levels. Uh, just a very, very cool game that I do not hear enough about. So Jewel Master for the Sega Genesis, I highly recommend it. And the next game that I wanted to uh, shine a light on that was only playable on the Sega Genesis back in the day uh, in my opinion is probably the best 16-bit boxing game that you can play uh, and I know that's saying a lot um, but uh, and, and it's kind of weird to have maybe a sports game on this list but this game is worthy and that is Greatest Heavyweights uh, by Sega Sports um, this game is amazing uh, and you know what let's not talk about it let me show you Greatest Heavyweights and we'll take a look at the gameplay Greatest Heavyweights uh, was developed by Malibu and published by Sega and was released in 1993 for the Sega Genesis. Uh, it's a follow-up to Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing. Um, and it's, it's almost identical, but it isn't. They, they've made some really good um, improvements to Greatest Heavyweights and really improved the game. Now I will tell you that Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing is an excellent boxing game. Um, but Greatest Heavyweights made some improvements. They added some of the Greatest Heavyweights from the history of boxing. Very cool that way. You also get a very robust create a boxer led um, area where you can create all you know your boxer the way you want to create them. You can pretty much make them look the way you want them to look. Uh, you can distribute points and in your meter. It's it's really not points, but you know you you can do a slider back and forth and uh, determine how powerful you want your guy to punch. Uh, if you want him to be a speed guy, if you want him to be well balanced, um, that's up to you, man. And it's uh, it's very cool. Uh, and there's a little bit of an RPG element to this game. And I love sports games with an RPG element. Um, you could train in between bouts. And it's very cool to try to um, get the most out of your training and increase your stats uh, in, a, in a way that uh, is going to help you the most. Um, so that adds kind of a really cool element. Also, there are meters for your head and your body when you're boxing. If that meter uh, gets to a certain level, you're taking a bunch of head shots, let's say, and you're just getting, you know, pummeled in the head. Uh, if that meter gets to a certain level, you will start to bleed. And um, yes, that is one thing that the Sega Genesis did <laughs> back in the day. They, they didn't hesitate to show blood. Um, but it's a very cool thing, very cool game, very strategic. Uh, the action's great, uh, the control is precise, um, everything you want in a boxing game I highly recommend. Greatest heavyweights for the Sega Genesis and even Evander Holyfield Drill Deal Boxing. And the next game that we're going to look at, uh, I never hear about, and it is a good movie tie-in game. Yep, I know it's hard to believe. Um, and it is a launch game. 
and that is Rambo 3. Um, yes, there is a good Rambo game out there, and it's on the Sega Genesis. So let's take a look at Rambo 3. In 1989, uh, Rambo 3 was released for the uh, Sega Mega Drive and Sega Genesis. Um, it's an overhead perspective. Um, it has several different weapons uh, that you can use. Um, you can use your machine gun. You've got the uh, bow and arrow, and the arrows are exploding arrows, which is very, very cool. Um, and it just it plays very well. Uh, it's pretty tough uh, at first until you get kind of used to it. Um, and uh, it's, it's just uh, one of those games that I honestly completely missed back in the day. And uh, I wish I wouldn't have. Um, I'm glad that I picked it up later in life, and I really do like it. I know I would have loved it back in the day. Um, you know, there's several different mission types as well, and there's some really cool bonus levels where you're taking down a, uh, a helicopter or a tank uh, with your bow and arrow, your bow and exploding arrows. Um, yeah, there's uh, hostages that you have to rescue, and then, um, in, especially in the second level, once you rescue the hostage, uh, you're told the dungeon is going to explode in so much amount of time, so you got to escape. Uh, but this game is very good, good action, um, a good movie tie-in, and a good Rambo game uh, for once. So, very cool. I highly recommend Rambo 3 for the Sega Genesis. And the last game that we're going to look at today, and uh, yes, I know there is a Rocket Knight adventure game on the Super Nintendo, um, but it is a sequel, and you know, it's Sparkster. And in my opinion, the sequel did not live up to the game itself, and uh, that is Rocket Knight Adventures. Uh, this game here is only available on the Sega Genesis, and I feel is a must-play. It's a great game for kids and adults alike, kind of like Mickey Mouse, um, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse uh, in that same type of vein. It's a very, very good uh, platformer and it has some really cool mechanics that you use your jetpack for. Um, really good game. So let's take a look at Rocket Knight Adventures. Rocket Knight Adventures may have been overlooked by a lot of people and it was by me. Uh, because it came later in the uh, Sega Genesis lifespan. So it was released uh, by Konami in 1993. Um, and you play as a possum knight who fights um, basically an army of robots and pigs. <laughs> and a lot of times uh, the robots and pigs um, will be uh, piloting different types of vehicles and you have to take them down as well. Uh, you'll see some really good mini boss fights and boss fights um, and really the gimmick or the uh, gameplay mechanic that I really like in this game is you can charge your jetpack up and then uh, release it and when you release it it gives you a huge boost and you can reach areas uh, that uh, look like they're impossible to reach um, and it's cool you get that short boot, uh, boost of uh, jet power and rocket you up in the air or you can actually jump up and turn diagonally and let go of your charge button and you'll go that direction so uh, it is really cool um, a lot of really good uh, level design here and good atmosphere uh, and it just has that uh, a charm about it uh, that other games don't and I think it's kind of funny because I kind of wonder if maybe Konami was wanting to make that their mascot, you know, and, uh, you know, Sparkster is the star of the game, and, you know, then he made it over to the Super Nintendo in a uh, sequel, uh, if you will. Um, and, you know, but I, I like Rocket Knight Adventures better than the sequel, I just do. Uh, and so it's, it was kind of cool, you know, to find out that this game was only available on the Sega Genesis, but I highly recommend it. Great game for kids, great game for adults. And it does get challenging uh, in the later levels, but it's very, very worth playing. So um, I highly recommend Rocket Knight Adventures.
Well, there you go. Uh, five games that I feel are a must play on the Sega Genesis and were only available on the Sega Genesis. Um, and, you know, of course, I don't make this video to <laughs> hate on the Nintendo uh, at all. I love my NES, love my Super NES, my Cube, um, N64, my Switch, love it. Um, and so I'm a big uh, Nintendo um, fan as well. Uh, but back in the day, I could only have one console for at least a pretty decent period of my life, and it was the Sega Genesis. Um, so I just kind of wanted to highlight that, and you know, maybe we can take a walk down memory lane when we used to have those uh, discussions with um, somebody who owned the other console, and uh, you know, we always tried to debate them and, and uh, make them think that our console was better than theirs. <laughs> Um, so uh, that's what this video is about um, and I really want to thank you for taking time out of your day joining me today and especially if you made it to the end of this video thank you so much um, and I do hope you have a safe rest of your day